Hi guys, so I'm finally starting my cosplay video. Can you believe it? Finally, it's here. So this is part one. Well, I'm gonna be telling you what you're going to need for this before I start it, because the rest is gonna be kind of like a voiceover. So first of all, you're going to need some felt, so you can make these beautiful flowers. Joe actually cut this one out because my ones looked a bit crap. So like, you're going to need a beautiful felt so you can cut out flowers like this. So like, this isn't my attempt. And you're going to need green felt so you can do kind of like leaves. I'll show you what kind of felt I got, kind of different colour flowers. So I've got green felt for the leaves, these squares about like 90 pence in the craft shop. And I got different kind of light purples and dark purples and pinks, which I can't find the rest of the pinks, I'll find them somewhere. And they're going to be a template for leaves that will be kind of different sizes and flowers. That you're also going to need webbing, I'm not sure where the webbing is right now, but you're going to need webbing as well to stick the flowers onto the dress. You're going to need some elastic. I got this from John Lewis and that's gonna be for your waistband. You didn't have to have a grey thread, but I got this grey thread because I think it really matches the fabric. And for fabric, you're going to need some grey fabric. I picked the closest colour to Totoro as I could. I then got six metres of it. It's from John Lewis, it's called Ponte Roma. If I can find the card, I'll show you guys. I got it on sale because it's usually like, I think 12 pound a metre, but I got it six pound a metre. I got five to six metres of it. Um, since it's all on my mannequin at the moment, I'll show you guys on the mannequin what it looks like. So you're going to need some grey fabric like this, and this is how much fabric you're going to have. It's a lot of fabric, right? And say hi to Joe, he started his cosplay. <laughs> um, and you're also going to need more. So um, I'm only going to... At the moment, I'm only going for the things you're going to need for the skirt bit because I haven't really worked out the top bit yet. I haven't got all the things for the top bit, so we'll get to that in the next video. So this is just for the skirt bit. And you're also going to need... You're going to need some brown paper to make the pattern for the skirt as I'm going to try to make a circle skirt for the skirt. It's a sewing machine. And last but not least, you're going to need a big-ass petticoat. So um, it's an no enormous petticoat. So this is kind of the, the petticoat I got. I can link it below. I got it from eBay for about £20. I spent a bit extra because I really wanted that poof. I want that move, bitch, go out of the way petticoat. I'll show you guys. You're going to need a massive petticoat like this one. I'll show you guys what it looks like on because I don't really feel like you can quite see just how big it is. Okay guys, so you need this big move bitch get out of the way petticoat. <laughs> can you see just how big it is? It's got swirl and this is going to make your Totoro princess dress that much more princey, princessier. Yeah? And that's all I can say you're going to need for now and obviously some pens and fabric scissors etc. Okay guys, let's start. So do the mass for the circle skirt, you need the radius equals the circumference divided by pi is the radius of the skirt. So you need measurement of your waist in inches divided by two pi, which is pi times two. So it seems hard, but it's really simple, trust me. So my waist is about 27 or 28 inches. I plus two inches for a room. If your fabric is stretched like mine, I'd say you don't need to plus the two inches for a room, just leave your waist as is. So then your radius is 30, like your, or whatever your waist measurement is inches and um, divided by 2 pi so if you don't have the pi function on your calculator you can do pi which is 3.14 times 2 which is 6.28 and then I got 30 divided by 6.28 or pi times 2 and I got I 4.75 this is rounded up to the next quarter inch so do that as well and then the length of my skirt, which I wanted, I measured it to be 46 inches. So your first, to do the length of the skirt, you need to add 4.75 plus 46, and I've got 50.75 inches. And that's gonna be the length of the second circle of your skirt. I rounded it up to 51 when I was measuring my skirt out. And then for the first circle, which is gonna be your waist, like a quarter of the waist measurement, is gonna be 4.75, and that will be the first circle as it's a quarter of the measurement. Okay, so now to move on to um, drawing out the skirt pattern. You'll need to measure down the 4.75, which was your waist, and you need to also measure this across as well. After you've done this, you're going to join those two measurements up to kind of make a circle. You're going to make points of 4.75 all around to make sure it has the same circumference. And then you should join up all those lines and then you should have 
your first circle, which will be the waist circle. Okay, now just double check all around that you have the same measurement the whole way around. Perfect. Okay, I'm paper more paper down since my skirt length is really long, so you're going to need it to be wider. Okay, so I showed you how I did the circle before, which I measured down 4.75, which was the calculation, and I measured across to 4.75, which was the calculation. I took the ruler from here to this point and got in 4.75 as well, and I just marked it. I did it all around, so I got a clean circle. Now, since my skirt's going to be really long, I had to tape, as you may have noticed, three large bits of paper together to get the length of what I needed. So I did the same. I measured from this point all the way down to here. And this point is my 51 centimeters. Well, it's actually 50.75, but I just did 51, rounded it up, of the length. And then since it needs to go all the way around, I measured, I measured from this point diagonally on the paper to here to get the 51 centimeters. I did this 51 inches, sorry, not centimeters, inches. So the same thing, I'm just doing it on a bigger scale. I'm gonna do the same as well. I'm gonna measure from that top point, you see there, and to here, all the way around till I get my circle. So I'll catch you when I get my circle. There's no way of me showing you this on my tripod. I just cannot fit it in the frame. Okay, I've redrawn the green line a bit thicker. I'm gonna admit it was kind of hard to get it accurate since like we're using this point and I'm going drawing down to make the 51 and each joining up joining up like it just kept changing so I did it as best as I could with the second circle it goes all the way around like so I'm just gonna check the measurements and then I'm gonna cut it out once you've done it the second circle you're just gonna cut it all out and you're gonna also cut out the smaller circle as well once you've cut out the bigger one and then this is gonna be your skirt pattern that's gonna act as a half or a quarter of a semicircle, however big, however big your fabric is. Along each side of the pattern, you're going to write fold as you're going to be lining up the part of pattern across the fold so when you cut it out, it opens out correctly. Fold on both sides. Okay, so don't use a crayon, use a felt tip pen as the crayon is a bit inaccurate. So make double check all your lines from the center edge. So here, double check all the lines. So I'm gonna cut along here, then line it up. And then we're gonna fold it in half and then cut cut a semicircle, then do it up same on the other side, fold the other side in half, and then cut a semicircle, and so we're two semicircles together. I will show you. But the lovely Joe is gonna help me to fold this ginormous piece of fabric in half and just like take care to try to fold it in half as evenly as possible. It's just so much fabric to fold in half. If you have someone to help you, I recommend trying to get someone to help you fold in half. And um, just like smoothing out the edges and stuff. Okay, once it's in half, you're just gonna lay your pattern down. And before you cut the pattern, like lay something down to keep it in place. So just put some shoes across it. Just grab all the shoes. <laughs> okay, then you're just gonna like curl it out. Now we've done this, I'm gonna open it out. Now it's opened up, we're going to repeat that step again. So what we just did, we're just going to fold the material over it in half again and cut that shape out again. As we're going to show, sew these two shapes together. So I'm not going to show that because I'm actually just repeating the shape, the same step and doing it over again. So I'll catch you when we've got both of these shapes cut out and then we're going to sew them together. This is the second semicircle. This is all the material that is left over, which will be for the top and hopefully enough for a bow. Might need another meter for a bow, but yeah, just get enough fabric to your size, what you think you'll need. It's about six meters. I think it's just about gonna fit everything on. You can get seven if you like. What we are gonna do is sew the two semicircles together in the end. And you saw the mean Joe struggle to fold it all out. And I was doing my press blade too. Yeah. <laughs> This edge showing stone together, and you can see here this edge sewing together, and you've got the circle in the middle. Put one semicircle on top of the other and line them up as you're going to pin across one edge so you can sew that edge together accurately, and then just pin it like 
long ways as just pinning it like this is easy to sew over. Just sew along the fabric as accurately as you can, like as straightly as possible and try to not get the fabric to kind of like bite. Do a reverse stitch when you get to the end so it keeps it all nice and neat together. The waist was far too big so I'm going to like sew it a bit further in and cut the excess so just do your waist measurement to what you think it is correctly don't add an extra two inches anything you can add an extra inch or half inch but then add an extra two inches you're going to sew the other side together as well pin and sew along the line perhaps an elastic and put it around your waist and cut it this is going to be your waistline so lay the elastic down on some fabric measure how wide your elastic is and i'm saying three times this about four so you've got room for your casing of your waistband so i'm kind of folding it over to see how much i need to do it and it's going to be probably about four inches so i'm going to cut it around four inches and that's going to be the casing for your waistband once you've cut this all out you're going to kind of like fold it together to make sure it's quite like neat and it fits the elastic perfectly and everything okay you're going to fold it over and you're going to sew along the edge and then you're going to off that you're going to feed the elastic through that casing once you fed the elastic through the casing sew along the line to make sure it doesn't come out once you've done that you're going to pin it to the skirt um the right way up as when you flip it it will be like you won't be able to see the seam so you're just going to like sew it down like that once it's sewed, it should kind of look something like this. This is a skirt without the petticoat. Guys, so look, it's like this. Obviously, the skirt length needs to be cut, needs to be cut and hemmed, but the waist fits perfectly. And obviously, you're going to want to make the elastic smaller than your waist because it stretches, so it fits perfectly. Nice. You're like a hovercraft right now. <laughs> <laughs> skirt length is really long. Um, obviously, measure the skirt length to what you want it to be. I overcome. I added a few extra inches. I added too many of them, a few extra inches. So to cut it straight, Joe's genius idea was to put this um, rope around it, and then cutting right. around it to cut it straight, and then gonna then hem it. So all this excess material is gonna oh, almost excess material is probably gonna be my bow but you should have enough excess material anyway like left over from the rest of the um material so I'm gonna hem this gonna pull it off first Whoosh. okay gonna now stand it up and put it on the fold it over like this and then you're just gonna so along this edge. I'm just using this bit of card to make sure it's the same width where I'm hamming and just grab a measuring tape and make sure it's the same width all the way around so you've got an even skirt level once it's hemmed and I'm just pinning it and just checking all the way around so it's just going to be very level as you don't want like an asymmetric skirt. Once hemmed you should have something that looks like this. Swoosh! <laughs> Squish! <laughs> and then we're going to attach the flowers and leaves around the bottom. Around. We're going to start pinning flowers and leaves on the dress that will go around and look up. I'll show you how to make the flowers and leaves. And so I'm going to put this on a stand. So, like, yeah, and start pinning them. If you don't have one, I'm, sh if, I'm sure the petticoat works as there's its own stand. So <laughs> I guess you can just have it on the petticoat and do it like so. But yeah, it's going well so far. And there's loads of space, I'm not restricted at all. <laughs> I'm so happy. Now for the flowers and the leaves. I'm gonna show you how I made these flowers and leaves. And I'm just going to need all the felt. I used about five pieces of green felt and two of each colour of each felt. So you're going to grab the green felt and you're just going to cut in leaves into it. And the leaves can kind of be like whatever, they can be whatever shape or size, so it's good to have a variation you don't really get leaves at the same size. You don't want them to be too uniform or anything. 
Um, I'm also going to show you another way of doing leaves, just like try it without putting it in the frame for me. <laughs> um, so this is like one kind of leaf you can kind of make, like I'm sure you know how to make leaves anyway. And I'm just going to, another way Joe taught me is just to fold it over, pin it, and I'm just going to grab the scissors and cut the shape and then when you unpin it and fold it you should have kind of like a perfectly symmetrical kind of leaf and you can lean up, do whatever you want to it. Okay, so after you've got a pile of leaves of different sizes, just continue doing this with all the green felt. I'm going to now show you how to do the flowers. So grab your favourite template, draw, draw them out, grab your favourite one, and you're going to pin that one down and draw around it and just use that like the best flower for all of them. And once you've drawn around it with a pen that you can like see quite clearly, it doesn't have to be this big, but just something you can see quite clearly. And then you're going to unpin it and then you're just going to kind of really neatly cut it out as you obviously want it to be as neatly as possible and once you cut it all out then there you go you're just going to kind of continue doing this like till you've got enough flowers the more the merrier it's good to have spare and this is kind of what it looks like see look it works pretty well and then yeah grab all your different color belts and as i said just do the same see so many pinks and purples Okay, pile of flowers, apparently it's time to start pinning them onto the dress. So grab your flowers and these and start arranging and pinning them onto the dress how you would like to actually stick them down with the webbing so you kind of get, it's a lot easier when you like about to web them down and it kind of looks like this. I've kind of alternated the colours so it's like not any colours next to each other, if it is it'll be like light pink, dark pink. Okay, once you've got everything pinned on the skirt how you like it, you're going to take the skirt off of whatever you're, how you're pinning it and then we're going to use the webbing and then you're going to cut everything into strips and stick it on the end of the flowers and since it's all pinned down it can now come off to all be ironed on. Grab some webbing and put it on the back of the belt and flip it and then you're going to grab iron and iron that on like securely, be very careful with the iron and just give it like, a good bit of iron so it's all flat. Flower, do the same, get the webbing, make sure you're covering up those petals, get them all, just do it kind of neatly and once you've done it, pat it all down so it stays when you give it a good flip and then flip it over and then you're going to iron it down the same again and it should stick down. Be okay, careful with the iron again, like it gets really steamy. Try not to get the iron stuck to my bin and that just is such a mess. Yeah, it's all ironed on and it's great. So just continue doing this the whole way around. Guys, I've ironed on this much. And it's looking pretty good, so yeah, my forest inspired Tartaro dress is coming along. See how long it's going to take me to get this section done. This is the final skirt. I'm really happy with how it turned out as it was kind of forest inspired Totoro. If you liked it, tune into the next part. So, we'll be doing like the bow, the top, and the accessories, etc. Or like and subscribe button down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!